Are you in Galatians chapter 2? Look at verse number 4. The Bible says, And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. And so here's a, yet another warning about the false brethren, right? And as I said before, I, I brought up the, the prophets and the Pharisees and all these other scriptures, but this is specifically talking about false brethren, again, unawares brought in. So they're not coming in just saying that they, that they don't agree and that they don't believe these things. They come in privately. That's what privily means privately, to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage. So what? they have a bad goal. They don't come in to learn. They don't come in to want to learn the truth. They come in to bring us into bondage. And, you know, this is why I love, I love our church and churches like our church. We're not going to be deceived on the gospel at all. And this is another reason why it's important to go soul winning regularly because it's going to keep the gospel just fresh in your mind all the time. And you're, if you're always thinking about the gospel, you're going to be reading your Bible and, and just seeing how, the, you know, just the truth of the gospel over and over and over again. You're explaining it to people. And the more you explain things to people, just the more cemented and, and just certain it is in yourself. And what these people were doing and the false brethren they like to do is they like to, to backdoor works and to try to pervert the gospel of Christ and to change it and twist it into something that's, that's a lie. And this is exactly the response that the apostle Paul had. He said, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour. Right? When, so when these guys come in, they were crept in, they were there. But then they start talking to them, and they're trying to, to, to bring in this works and, and, and subtly, uh, um, you know, bring us into bondage. He's like, they ain't going to stand. They're not going to stand with us so that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But you know who it works with? The people who aren't really that established. Yep, yep. The people who don't know that much. The people who maybe they're newly saved. They're unstable souls. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 2, these are the people they try to separate themselves with and try to get in. And this is also why we're not going to do these independent Bible studies sanctioned by our church. Yeah. It's also why I don't recommend just having these group Bible studies of going around, oh, well, here, I'm going to lead this group Bible study at my house, and you guys can all come. And, you know, I, I've mentioned this before, so someone tried to do that faithful word, and Pastor Anderson, you know, showed him the door quickly and explain that that's not going to happen here because that guy was coming in trying to bring in some damnable doctrine, damnable heresy. And he wasn't, you know, at first it was just, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I believe, like, you, you know, like, like we believe the same. I, can, can we get something going here, though? It's like, you just showed up and visited for the first time. You know, that, that was kind of a, a rookie mistake. He was a younger guy. I don't know. Um, but trying to, trying to come in and do something like that right off the bat. But you know what? There's probably a lot of churches that be like, yeah, that's a good idea because they're so excited that someone new is there. Just let them do it. But no, not, not at a good church. You're going to spot that and be aware of that. And look, understand that there's going to be false brethren. They're going to try to come in privily and bring us into bondage. And no, you shouldn't give place by subjection for an hour. You know, we... we you know, we're going to show them, you know, recently someone came in here and I, I spent a lot of time trying to show them the right way because I felt like they were listening and being receptive. But then after more communication, it comes out later. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like he actually doesn't want to listen. He was just coming trying to spread his John MacArthur works based salvation and, you know, talking to me like, like, you know, and, and look, here's the thing. When it comes to what I believe about being saved, I don't have to be humble about that in the sense of like, oh, well, maybe I am wrong. Look, no, I'm not wrong. Okay, if I have any doubts about you know, what it takes to be saved, then I shouldn't even be a pastor of a church. Okay, if you, if you think like, oh, you know what? Yeah, let me consider that. Maybe I do have to make Jesus the Lord of my life and follow his works and follow his path to be saved. And, you know, if I, if I really believe I'll do all this stuff, you're like, look, no, no, not for... Not for an hour. Yeah, right. And he came in to try to influence our church instead of actually learn. He said over and over again how much it was 
Oh, well, I, I mean, if I'm wrong, just let me know. Oh, if I'm wrong, you know, just, I just want to know. Just let me know. I just want to know what the truth is. Okay, great, because I, you know, I like that attitude. Yeah. Yeah. But then you find out, no, you don't just want to know. You want to teach. You want to bring in damnable heresy. You want, you know what? No, we're not going to tolerate that. I don't have any questions about my salvation. You're the one with questions on your salvation. Yeah. Yeah. You're the one that doesn't know. You're the one that's already been proven wrong. But now you want to come in and bring this up. You know what? No, we're not going to let you bring in that stuff privily. Yeah. 